Hello. Today we're going to try to answer a question looking at what's the difference between when we say rheumatoid arthritis is seropositive or seronegative. So just for brief background, and certainly we have many other videos that go over this as well, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune inflammatory chronic disease. We don't understand exactly why it happens other than it is autoimmune in nature, meaning the immune system decides to attack the joints and causes joint pain, stiffness, swelling, and if not well controlled as a result of those things can lead to permanent joint damage. And while we think of rheumatoid arthritis as a disease that affects joints, it certainly can affect many other parts of the body as well. So what does seropositive mean? So rheumatoid arthritis can be described based on the presence of certain antibodies in the body. The one that's perhaps best known as being around the longest is a antibody called rheumatoid factor, or RF. And more recently, over the last 15 years or so, there's a new one called cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody, or CCP for short. Classically, when we used to say seropositive, it really just meant talking about rheumatoid factor, but now often that includes CCP. And really to be more specific, we should say RF positive or CCB positive or RF negative or CCP negative rheumatoid arthritis as opposed to seropositive or seronegative. But that terminology is still certainly used. So is that terminology important? What does it mean? So the presence of these antibodies do not make for a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis on their own. So if you are positive for rheumatoid factor, or you are positive for anti-CCP antibody, by itself, this does not mean that you have rheumatoid arthritis. And in some cases, it does not mean that you'll necessarily ever have rheumatoid arthritis. In the right setting, they could help put the picture together and confirm or fit with the diagnosis. So it's only one piece of the puzzle. It's still really important to talk to the person in front of you so you can understand what symptoms they're having, to do a good physical exam, and then put that in the right context of the laboratory tests that you order. The reason why this is important, because rheumatoid factor and CCP positivity are not necessarily that great of tests on their own if they were to be used diagnostically. Rheumatoid factor is only 70% sensitive and 70% specific. What that means is that for sensitivity, if rheumatoid factor is negative, it means you don't have rheumatoid arthritis 70% of the time. That's actually not a very high number. That's not very good. And if it's positive, it tells you how specific, how good it is to actually inform that you do have rheumatoid arthritis. Really, anything below 90% is not very impressive. So it's not a very good test on its own. CCP positivity, you can see, is still not very sensitive. It can be very specific. So in this case, it can be unusual to be CCP positive and not have rheumatoid arthritis, but there are reasons why that can be. For someone who's CCP positive, it's usually a good idea to be seen by a rheumatologist just to make sure we're not missing any underlying rheumatoid arthritis. So if we shouldn't be using seropositive to make a diagnosis, why do we order it? So while not diagnostic, it can be a useful prognostic test. Meaning that if you left someone untreated, which we should never do, with rheumatoid arthritis, and if they're RF positive or CCB positive, it's more likely that their disease will be worse over time and have more complications over time, say over the next 10 years, compared to someone who has rheumatoid arthritis, who is RF negative, and CCP negative. And that can be really useful information for the person with rheumatoid arthritis as well as their rheumatology team as it can help inform treatment choices. So you may see someone who has rheumatoid arthritis who is seropositive and say, you know what, we should probably treat this a little bit more aggressively, safely, appropriately so at the beginning to ensure that we don't have those worse outcomes, to ensure we don't have those complications down the road. So prognostically can be quite, quite helpful. And that's really the difference 
between these two things. So while seropositive and seronegative rheumatoid arthritis looked the same, and generally speaking, should be treated the same. Our goals of treatment of getting under good control remission are the same. It's also possible the underlying reason for why you get rheumatoid arthritis is different. So one of the things that we don't un fully understand is, are the genetics or the environmental triggers that induce that autoimmune response with seropositive or seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, are they the same or different? Could it be that rheumatoid arthritis that's seronegative versus seropositive, while they look the same, perhaps the underlying disease is a little bit different, which maybe if we understand that eventually, that informs different treatment choices. But certainly today, that's not the case. Now, one particular pattern where you could suggest this is the case is psoriatic arthritis. So psoriatic arthritis uh, is another form of inflammatory arthritis. It can look very similar to rheumatoid arthritis. It doesn't have to, but it can. And in some cases, some with psoriatic arthritis may have psoriatic arthritis, but without psoriasis. Well, if you're seronegative and you don't have psoriasis, sometimes it may be difficult to know, do you have seronegative rheumatoid arthritis or do you have psoriatic arthritis? Fortunately, the treatment choices, particularly at the beginning, are exactly the same. So it doesn't change our management, but it's interesting to understand that Again, seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, seropositive rheumatoid arthritis could actually be different diseases that just look the same. It should be clear that I'm not suggesting all seronegative rheumatoid arthritis is psoriatic arthritis. It's just one possibility. For more information on rheumatoid arthritis, on its treatments, on psoriatic arthritis and its treatments, feel free to check out any of our other videos or visit us, visit us on our website at albertorheumatology.com.